Welcome back to SCR Like the Best. I'm your host, Michael Chang. It's my pleasure to welcome Chase Sharifa on the podcast. Chase, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate you taking the time with us today. Uh, why don't I give you a second if, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to the audience? Sure. My name is Chase Sharifa, and I'm personally a lender and I guess a former or avid wedding videographer, photographer turned STR host with okay. my wife. So that's our story and we're sticking to it. So we have several cabins. We specialize in short-term rentals in California, Tennessee, and in Branson, Kentucky area. And we just love to deliver amazing experiences for our guests, experiences, we, 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 I guess. We were talking about the. We were talking before. You, you got one of your your first property, which we'll talk. We'll touch on in Big Bear, California, and it's been profiled in some really amazing publications. I'd love to talk more about that and how that's really grown your business. Foot cap, the Lightfoot cabin. Yeah, Lightfoot cabin. Mm -hmm. Cabin. Let's talk about that. But before we go there, I was asked this question. You have five short term rentals. Like, what's a memorable experience? that you'd love to, that you can share with the audience here? What's something that's come to your mind, experience that you, you've gone through? One of our properties, I really wanted to scale so bad, but we ran out of money. So luckily with the whole pandemic going on, I really wanted like EVs are the thing. So, and I didn't, couldn't decide which I wanted to get. So I pre-ordered both the Rivians and all the Teslas, and then finally came into fruition where they were coming in and I was like, I can't take all of this, but the prices had gone up on all of them. But my my price that I bought it for lock, got locked in. So I decided, what if I just take delivery and sell it? Would that actually work? And I did. I sold all of them with a slight profit. And I used nice. some of those profits to buy a cabin. Awesome. Flip, flipping pre-sale Teslas for yeah. STR cabins. Okay, I love it. Let's talk about your portfolio. You own all your properties, right? You don't, do, you don't rent any of them and then re-rent them. You, all you do is own. Is that correct? All I do is own. Yeah, I do okay, not perfect. rental arbitrage. Huh? No. I think a lot of people here are that listen, they're interested in rental arbitrage, but I think ultimately, and I agree with this, like owning your properties is the path to long term wealth, right? You get the appreciation benefits, tax depreciation, and with short term rentals, you get the cash flow. But tell us about your first property in Big Bear. How did you get that first property? And how did you get it on Cotton Nas? <laughs> yeah. So, that was a, a crazy story where in 2020, everyone was all about van life and we had just had our first son and we're like, man, wouldn't it be cool to just go out and just <laughs> live the van life? So we we're looking at all these things and then I go to a dealership and a dealership said, yeah, you could even use a second home loan. And I'm like, a second home loan? Yeah, it qualifies for it. So it has a bathroom, a kitchen or whatever. I'm like, why would I ever use a second home loan on a car? And then it just made me stop and rethink. I was like, I'm not going to buy a liability. We don't know that after this pandemic thing, this is all going to, nobody's going to want to do van life anymore. It's just a temporary thing. So I was like, in that case, why don't we actually just get an actual second home, like a cabin? Like we've always dreamed of that, right? So we, our real estate journey thus far was we bought our first home in 2017, this little two bedroom, one bath, 800 square foot, single family. We had moved out to a new build in 2020 and we're renting the old place long term. And so we're like, hey, we're really savvy. We're investors or whatever. And now if we get a cabin, that's it. My life is complete, right? Uh, I've got my cabin, I've got my long term rental and I've got the home I lived, I live in and we're all good. And so that's when we started our search, like end of 2020, beginning of 2021. We went everywhere, Lake Arrowhead, that's more a private lake area. Big Bear is the big name in the mountains. But we settled on this little town just outside of Big Bear called Running Springs. And it just had a charm to it. And and we found this property and it was in the snow and it just called to us with kind of the shapes and the potential it had. It had some problems, so we knew we had to do some renovation, but my wife was all in and so mm -hmm. was I. And, and then we, we made an offer on that property. We got it. We used a second home loan designation because we wanted it was going to be our second home, but rented it part of the time. And so we went through the renovation and we did something a little bit crazier than most, right? A lot of people were advising us, hey, you have a thousand square foot home. Airbnb is all about beds with heads. Your permit says you can sleep eight. I would sleep eight. Put a bunk bed, put this and that and pull out and really maximize it. I'm like, that just doesn't sound attractive to me though. So I said, you know what? Let's do something radical. Like my wife and I were 
just with our first son. I was like, let's build it for like us before like we had kids. Let's build it for a couple and then let's focus on just that. And so we did. And we really wanted a black cabin mm -hmm. with a cedar outside and a mid-century like styling. And a lot of people were attracted to that. And one of the things that we did that was different besides focusing on the couples was that we had a hidden amenity. And nope. that's really what kind of propelled us. And they're like, wait, you put this amazing amenity and you don't talk about it? I'm like, no, I tease at it on my description and I don't show any pictures of it. And we tell all the guests not to take pictures of it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And so that's what is it? Oh, you want to know? Oh, I want to oh, know. Sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have so, to stay you have to stay at my cabin too. You have to and we'll be right back. No, I'm just <laughs> for some words from our sponsors. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Stay at the Lightfoot Cabin. I'll give you 20% off. Well, that's right. No, our hidden amenity is a secret movie theater. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very moody, very dark green, tobacco leather, almost uh, like a bourbon lounge feel. There's like a candy wall where you have a bunch of candy that you can get. There's a popcorn machine there's a hundred inch projection Jesus. Like movie it's not just a tv so we try to go as high end as we could and yeah so it's a hidden amenity and that's not even the the best part of the cabin so the best part is we do a treasure hunt the day that you arrive at the cabin so once you arrive like on your way yeah. there yeah. three hours before you get a text from us saying hey we're excited for you to come by the way we're gonna start your journey with a treasure hunt so go uh, straight to the kitchen island to get your first clue. Because we love Amazing Race. Who doesn't? They start their clue. And essentially, the treasure hunt is just there to give them a tour of the home. Yeah, yeah. Of everything oh, wow. That's done. really so it's cool. a really cool, creative way for That's them. really cool. Show them everything. And then it ends. Throughout this whole time, there's music playing. And they're like, where does that music come from? But they're going to go through the treasure hunt. And at the very end, there is a secret bookcase door that you have to push to open up to get to the movie theater. Man, like what you're describing is like my wife would love, my wife really should be one doing this pod right now. Cause she, <laughs> everything that you said is, it's like her vision board. Like everything that you're talking about here is what she wants to like create, one of the experiences she wants to create. This is really cool that you've executed on that. So I'm gonna, I'm literally gonna tell her we finish this pod. That's so cool. I guess just from a business perspective, like this is, it's a lot to execute actually, right? You live in LA and this is, a fair amount away from you. How do you get, how do you do all this? We print out all the clues ahead of time. We prep okay. our cleaning crew. We pay them a good amount of money to set everything up. So they set up, so there's lights and the theater is already turned on by the time okay. the guests arrive and they set the stage for everything. So it made it actually even better that it was just a, a couple's getaway. So there's not that much turnover with regards to sheets and things. So we can yeah. focus in on the extra stuff. It's there. amazing. So it's so like a one, one or like a one, one and a half. One, one and a half. Uh -huh. Wow. And then how big is the cabin? A thousand square feet. Wow. That's a really nice honeymoon cabin. So how do you, and we were talking before and this got picked up by some major publications and was really the, what really launched your, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it launched your short term rental journey. Yeah. So no, it did. So we had been trying to work with influencers on Instagram and that's where it started. We didn't know where it was going to go. We thought it was just an influencer. So they were going to get us some great content and more followers on Instagram. I'm like, sure, we'd love to have you. And they came for Christmas and they loved it so much. And then I didn't know that she was also gunning for being a editor, one of the content creators for Condé Nast Traveler. And she just so happened to pick us. And she was on a tour of all of uh, California. She picked us as her favorite. And then we got featured and just so many people have asked about it. And then from there on, we used and leveraged that to obtain more no notoriety and eyes on the property. So do you take most of reservations now through direct bookings versus the OTAs, the online travel agents, Airbnb. We still do OTAs. Yeah. It's okay. mostly through Airbnb, but we okay. do get the occasional direct bookings and we're trying to build on that. And that's our next step. Got it. We're Got fairly it. New. This was only, we only launched September, 2021. Okay. So two years, two and a half years. It's amazing though. I'm like super curious about, and I know my wife, but I know Liz would love something like that to do something like that and also to stay something like that. So that's really neat. Let's maybe transition a little bit now to your other properties. 
Um, you have five total, right? You have a one in Big Bear, uh, or you know, next to Big Bear, uh, Running Springs, California. Two in Tennessee, where I own as well, in the Smoky Mountains National Park. One in Branson, Missouri, and then one in where in Kentucky do you own? In Louisville. Okay, but you have five properties in four geographies. Like maybe you can just talk about the journey on why you picked these locations, and maybe like why not just buy five in. Big Bear, or five in Tennessee, or five in Branson. These are fairly big markets. Because something I talk about a lot on the pod is and just one guiding principle for us. And again, everyone has different ways of doing it. Is we really want to scale in one location before we move on to a separate one because it's so hard to find a good cleaner. But you've done successfully like multiple geographies. So I'm just curious on like your thought process through that and how you've been able to like deliver these great experiences across five different locations. Yeah. What we wanted to prove was that I knew that in the future I was going to have to consult or coach some people through it. And by proving that I can do it in any market, city, vacation, different vacation, different location, that it's about your system, not really about the market. And that's a more sustainable way to grow your business anyway. So I'm saying that you can do this yourself. You can do it in any market. We'll prove it. You've only done it in one market. No, we haven't. We've already proven it in four almost yeah, about four markets now. And the reason for that, another reason is we wanted to insulate from local issues or problems, right? So when we were experiencing freezing and busted pipes in one market, the other markets were supporting that, th those other properties there and mm -hmm. vice versa. And it's really nice balance for our portfolio as well. Like our California property does really well during the winter time, whereas the Smokies are down a little bit and... California's down in the summer, Smokies are up. So it's a really nice portfolio balance for us as well. And then I would say the last thing would be, why did we choose different markets? I would say we wanted to go to the Smokies. My, my wife has always been wanting to go there. That was a natural thing because I guess of the hype, mm -hmm. but there was some hype, but man, we truly do love it. We love visiting. We actually love spending time there. So that's a really big thing. And then Kentucky was happenstance. Like we were following one of our friends and actually outside of Louisville, but we got reconnected with some, another real, to, real estate agent that told us that mm -hmm. maybe the city could be good for us. And that's one of our best investments thus far. So it's like a urban type property, not a vacation rental property. Okay. What maybe talk about the difference between operating an urban property that you own versus vacation rental property? Sure, vacation rental, some of them are coincide vacation, that type of thing, but there's definitely less families in the urban mm -hmm. type of environment. You're more catering to multiple sets of couples or a group of men or a group of women out mm -hmm. just out on the town where your location is really important too, obviously, but the draw is different, right? It's not the national park or outdoor things. It's more city life, concerts, restaurants, and specifically in Louisville, it's the Kentucky Derby, which is a huge draw, right? And then this year, there's a PGA tour there as well. We thought that alone was an amazing thing. Plus exit strategies in Louisville is much more prevalent than innovation yeah. markets. I could go <laughs> long-term rental. I could go mid-term rental. There's five hospitals within a two-mile radius. Yep. It just seemed like a, a good bet. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. We talk about vacation rentals a lot here. I'm going to focus on the on the Louisville one. Maybe tell us a little bit about, and you said it's your best deal. So we always like to put mm -hmm. some numbers around it. Yep. Like how much did you buy it for? Like how big is it? How many bedrooms, bathrooms? Sure. It's We bought it for 300K. It is three bedroom, two bathroom. And we, we did roughly 65 or set almost 70 K in wow. gross revenue. So that hit well above my target of 15 to 20% gross, which mm -hmm. is awesome. And why that one was our best one was we just got it appraised. It's we had done some renovations, new bathroom, new paint and things like that. And it's now 375. And also it was an oversized lot. So we were able to do a lot split like a subdivision. And now we're breaking ground on our third development which is another duplex on the side. Wow. For, That's really cool. Essentially no money. No money, right? Yeah. You own the land. You have to, mm -hmm. I guess there's some money you have to probably spend to entitle it and yeah. do the, the legal paperwork and stuff, right? That's so cool. It's, you buy, pulled all your money out and now you can build this second, the second property on top of it. I was just in a conference in Miami two weeks ago and I met this gentleman who started in Nashville, very similar kind of to what you just described there. And it said, it was like, this is the best deal ever. He turned $17,000 into $5 million. Wow. 
Yeah, he basically found, like, understood how zoning and national worked. And then basically, there's certain lots that there are these air rights. You can build multifamily on there. So he, like, bought them, split them up, built, and then has three amazing Airbnbs on these on this lot that was big. And then they, it's, just, yeah, they, he built some really cool stuff. It makes a lot of money. So it's really cool. Like this is the cool part about real estate. There's, if you find like an interesting thing, if you find an inefficiency in the market, you can really tap into it and create a lot of value for yourself. You have this, this amazing opportunity to build another property on a land that you don't have to pay any extra money for. And so it's really neat. It just reminded me of that story, the national story that I heard two weeks ago. So was this where we were talking a little about development too? You're developing, you're actually building a few properties now too, as well, right? We're developing a few properties as well. And in one this time in Arkansas, but it's not really Arkansas. It's just mm -hmm. south of Missouri, which is near our Branson property. So it mm -hmm. serves the same market. It's another couple's getaway, but this one just has an amazing lakefront view. And I just, we couldn't pass up on it to build something nice. custom from the ground up. So we're hoping that will do really well. And then we're doing our first partnership in Tennessee, where we brought in a partner to help us out. And we're building another A-frame there as well. Another couple's getaway. So <laughs> as you can tell, it's a recurring theme. That's our brand and that's our target. That's great though. They have this, you have this beautiful property in California that can, that is the tent pole for all your other properties. And then it's just a great way to, to market them. So that, that's fantastic. It's really smart to be good in one niche. So it's funny. It's just like one niche within short-term rentals, like just honeymoon cabins. And just being able to really dial in and, and be good at that niche and really dominate that. The talk about the development process. So, like, how do you learn how to do development through short term rentals? Like, most people, they have everyone has their kind of unique journey, but development is always one that trips people up because it's very difficult to do. So, how do you work your way to now developing four different properties? Some of it is happenstance, some of it is my background. I, I do have a civil engineering degree. Ah, so it okay. just, I just had transitioned over smart guy, a loan officer. <laughs> yeah. So I never really got to use that aspect, but now I guess to use some of it, but other than that, it was just through it. This land was presented. We never really knew what to do with it. I was like, you know what? Let's just dive into it. There's going to be a budget. There's going to be a bid. There's going to be certain permits that we're going to need. It's going to be a lot of red tape, but at the end, we're just going to get more value. And we just went in deep into learning about construction loans and what due diligence we need. And we messed up a lot and we went over budget. And But my thought process is that I could have spent a lot of that money in hiring a teacher or a coach to tell me anyway, but I guess I'm learning on the job type of thing. Mm -hmm. And now I can make each next new build more efficient than the last. And that's what we've been doing. What were, was it like YouTube or like what, like, where'd you get to get started? Or was it just like you had your civil engineering background and you just had a starting spot to go and I'm yeah, just trying so to like pull out a starting spot to go. Yeah. So we knew that the first part was understanding the construction loan process. And then after that point, it was, how do I make these numbers work? And then calling the county or calling other mentors or other short-term rental hosts or other builders on what is the next process. Really mm. leaning on other people's like knowledge. Surprisingly, not YouTube, but I use that quite often. But yeah, not <laughs> in this case and scenario. Talking with the construction lender, with the builder, talking with other people who's built before to figure that portion out. Gotcha. Okay. That's very cool. And then we think about basis, right? When you develop, it's always the highest risk because there's a lot of things that you have to understand and do, but your basis, your cost into the property is the lowest versus, you know, you buy something that someone else already built. And then mm. it's, there's just a lot more people willing to buy that. So it's just a lot more competitive versus people building. This is a lot harder. Maybe you talk about the difference between from a cost perspective, like maybe pick one property. If you were to build it, like what's the cost basis for that all in versus if you were to buy a similar property. So folks just get a, a sense of the value creation that you can do by doing this. Two bedroom, two bath with a view, probably 650 or something to maybe 700. You could probably build that for 450 and then plus whatever the land cost is. So you initially, okay. you already have about a hundred to 150 K in equity. Okay. What's, how long would it take for you to buy the land to get, to get up and running? Just what's the kind of typical timeline? Yeah. Depending on how complicated your build is, if it's a pretty standard, typical build, standard windows, builder grade finishes, it'll still look nice. Maybe you can upgrade some of the finishes, but just have a standard floor plan. You mm -hmm. can probably finish in four to six months. Oh, okay. Not too bad. 
Okay. Yeah. It, it gets more complicated when you have custom glass, custom. The more custom, the longer it takes. Bro, ordering this stuff. Then, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, yeah. It's ordering the stuff, creating the custom glass. That's going to be really difficult to frame. And then yeah. how deep your, how steep your slope is, that, that's gotcha. going to add more complication. How about if you add a pool? Yeah, that, <laughs> that adds on the price per square foot, at least $50 per square foot or more. You know? I got it. But yeah, that's one of the, the ones that we are going to build. Okay. The yeah, poles are one that we were talking to before. Poles are one of the biggest things. Is It's a big feature in, in Tennessee. Is it also big in, in Branson? No? Does Tennessee... It's not like Branson. Branson has Table Rock Lake. It's a huge water area where Tennessee has the Smoky Mountain National Park. Branson has Table Rock Lake. So they don't have really a shortage of that. And most places have an indoor community pool. So Got it. I feel like Tennessee, just like everything that happens in Orlando and Kissimmee, all the, the Disney market, like all the amenities and tips and tricks from people in that market has just migrated up to Tennessee. It's like everything that was in Florida a year and a half ago just migrates up to Tennessee. The murals, all those things that, all those things that differentiate properties. And I think that's a really big thing now. The more and more competitive space becomes, it just becomes more of an arms race. So how do you think about your properties as like the competition gets more and more, it gets more and more competitive? Do you just stick with, hey, we're going to do, we know the avatar that we're targeting the honeymoon, the, the honeymoon cabin and just drive on that? Or how do you think about that competitive dynamic? A lot of those people in Kissimmee, they, they're targeting huge families. So I'm not really a competition for them, right? So we're only competing with honeymoon cabins and most that I see are lackluster. So at least they think that because it's a cheap property, so they cheapen out on it. So we don't, yeah. right? So we go a little bit more above and beyond. And we try to do things slightly differently than most operators in that regard. Obviously we're staying up to date with all the tech that comes out or we try to be advanced with regards to like booking lead times. And we're always trying to create some sort of unique experience at each cabin. So for example, like the Arkansas A-frame that we're building, that's a custom with the lakefront that has a container pool, a private plunge pool container pool. And that's probably way too over the top, but hey, you know what? At the end of the day, it's whatever sells that particular property. It is heated. It's got a hot tub. It's got the view. It's got a mid-century look and uh, a huge deck space so i'm hoping that all of that will Crazy. result in wow a really great couple's getaway that's and so cool some, some small families that's so cool like that container did you buy one of those pod poles the ones where it's 50k yeah for, the mod for, pools yeah. the mod excuse me mod poles wow yeah yeah Th those aren't inexpensive that's gonna be a really nice couples okay that's so cool that uh, you're one of the first, only people i've spoken with actually that focus on this niche and make it really nice right i think that's where just to double down on that point right like just so you if you find a niche that you really are good at and just make it so good that you have no other competition like to your point like other people are doing that it doesn't matter to you because you you have what you're good at how much more do you think you put in to these properties that you think your competitor does do you have a max budget that you're like we're gonna put 30k in every one of the i'm gonna put this many dollar per square foot or like how do you think about elevate like from a cost perspective how do you think about that elevating that experience like how do you think about that versus the, the revenue that you can do we use the same rule for the rest usually if it's a two bedroom we'll probably ten thousand per bedroom to start off with mm, okay. and i think it's the way that we or i'm sorry the way we allocate the money okay so everyone could be thinking high end is maybe high end appliances, but that's not necessarily the case, right? So we try to, we have a different theory in how we apply the money. Like we really focus on the five senses, everything that the guests can see, we can maybe save a little bit. So if there's something that we could save, like on artwork, I'll either take a photo and print that out or print on Etsy or it's okay. It's, it doesn't have to be authentic. Nobody's going to care as long as it goes with the aesthetic and the theme. Paint goes a long way, right? And light fixtures, as long as it works, that's fine. It has the same look. I don't care if it's a replica. For the sofa or the couch, I'm not gonna cheap out on that. You're gonna sit on it, you're gonna touch it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna elevate that a little bit, right? We're gonna elevate the mattress a little bit because the, the number one thing that all people talk about is how well they slept. Yeah. And if we could just go all in on that. So most people use cotton. In our cabin, we use linen. Wow. So we upgrade that level so uh, as much as we could. So yeah. everything else, 
we go secondhand, we go thrifting, right? So for example, in our couple's cabin, we always have a record player. We don't get mm -hmm. brand new records. I go to the thrift store and get 99 cent records because it's much, much yeah. more nostalgic anyway, the scratches and the bends, and it feels yeah. like you've been there before. We call it like our, we add our own patina to the property. So it doesn't feel like n n no hate on Target, but it doesn't feel like Target or Ikea just furnished <laughs> it and let it go. It felt more curated and it's sprinkled throughout the cabin. You must spend a lot, you and your wife must spend a lot of time on this, right? This is, this isn't just like ordering off a list from Amazon and, or Target and getting it shipped and you're really curating these things. Yeah, we go and we stay at the property for a month before we launch it, even with some designer help. We stay there, we experience it like, oh man, this, you know what, this doesn't really work that well. It looked good on photos, but we get rid of artwork or we add different things. Wouldn't it be cool if we added this instead? And you could only learn that when you stay there yourself, right? This is amazing. It's like a ma this, you, 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 this is a master class on how to differentiate yourself within short term rentals, right? Find a niche that you're really good at, that you're passionate about, invest in it, and be able to build a business around it. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. This is really cool. For before folks that actually, yeah, before, before you move on, like spending your money uh, allocation, like a lot of people, when they go do short term rentals, they'll do this crazy accent wall and spend so much money on that. But I'm like, man, they're not going to see the accent wall. And, and they totally forget about the bathroom. And again, we're all about things that touch. Some of the things that we do is you don't even have to change that much. Having that square mirror that's just plastered on the wall. If you just replace that mirror with a new mirror and a yeah. new light fixture, that's such an ex inexpensive way to just transform the bathroom. And if you have extra budget, obviously for the fixtures as well. But my main tip is replace the shower head. It's yeah. so cheap, but it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And touching, it just yeah. creates an elevated experience for the guests showering and just something nicer. Yeah. Man, I, we, got, we need your help in, in some of our cabins in Tennessee to elevate the experience. We're, we're, can really, we, ours are large, the typical heads and beds. That's, hard, That's yeah. really, yeah. We have six beds, ours are like six bedrooms, 4,000. One's like 4,400 square feet, four levels. Yeah. yeah like we couldn't, we can never do li those linen sheets would get absolutely murdered the first day. but you don't um, have the same avatar yeah, right your avatar different. is different cotton could be just enough and yeah and that's all you need efficiency but that doesn't mean you can't elevate the experience regardless yeah yeah to your point like the shower heads couch i think there's these things where it's little things that not little but things that don't cost too much right but can right. really elevate the experience so, and i like the way that you framed it right what you can touch right like sitting on the couch like laying in bed right the comforter the the, the sheets the pillows pillows are a big thing right we actually mm -hmm. now we will replace the pillows in the cabins that we own we'll replace the pillows every year now it sucks because we will steal them so we need extras <laughs> like the king pillows we will they grow evidently they grow legs in tennessee because they walk off oh all gosh. the time like that we'll invest in right shower heads we hadn't thought about it, actually that's a good point maybe we'll yeah. get people to swap it's not too expensive heads. to have something no. that kind of mimics a rainfall shower and okay. then maybe just i would say one of the bathrooms leave it as like a wand head for mm -hmm. the kids be able to it's easier to shower the kids with a wand so that's the only one so if you have three bathrooms i would do two kind of rainfall looking ones and one for the kids and then that a lot of intent yeah i didn't even, I didn't even thought about that we actually just installed one of those handle ones for our we have a two-year-old daughter now she showers in the tub so we did right. that i didn't even think about doing that and we have six bathrooms so i'm sure we can do one of those out there yeah, and they're, they're easy yeah. yeah they're like it's 40 bucks from home yeah. depot and it was easy. like 20 bucks. Yeah, they're e it's really, yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's just some tape and get someone to, to frame it in. Mm -hmm. All right, Chase, I really enjoyed this conversation. Numbers, this is a really cool way of thinking about, no, really, but like, how do you get more revenue? Fundamentally for me, it's a business, right? We want to make profits. Of course. But of course. how do you, you know, there's different ways of doing that. And I really love the, your approach on elevating experience, really targeting a certain avatar and just getting like really good at that. And Look forward to to continue to learn from you. If folks want to reach out to you, what's the best way for folks to reach you? Well, you could follow us on at the Lightfoot Cabin on Instagram, or just you could call me or text me. That would be probably the best way. Okay. So follow what we'll do is we'll, we'll drop the link to Lightfoot Cabins on for the show notes for folks that want to reach out to Chase cool. and send him a DM, and I'm sure he'll be happy to share his experiences. Chase, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Appreciate you having me on.